Unlucky 7 is a Polish adventure game about alcoholic furries, created by an alcoholic Polish furry. How ironic. It also happens to be a waste of four hours, and a game I would hardly recommend to even the most devout degenerate. I would describe the experience as uncomfortable, not to say furries or drunk poles aren't particularly comforting to me, but more to say that the game is fucked in just about every way. Like any good YouTube reviewer, I'll start at the beginning, with you as a robot chained to the ceiling, forced to do the bidding of someone with a very tiny brain. This action beautifully represents the game in its entirety. You walk too slow, the English is broken. What does that- what does that sentence mean? What does that mean? Puzzles suck, everything takes too long to do, you walk too slow, you walk too fucking slow. The art's nice and the ambience is great, but let's not forget we're talking about a shit show here. We have four and a half hours of it to wade through, so let's speed this up. Oh, and don't worry, all this is pointless. Kind of makes you wonder why it's here, doesn't it? So here we are meeting our group proper, the Unlucky Seven. Moro, Vinny, Ellen, Xavier, Noah, Zongo, and... Cream pie? Don't bother trying to memorize any of those names. They're all carbon copies of one another at the end of the day. They're all drunk, they're all annoying, they're all stupid, and they all speak the same broken English. I guess one's scared of elevators and another's really stupid, but that's all that stuck out to me. And an adventure game with boring characters makes you wonder what the point of it all really is. It isn't to tell an interesting story, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Unlucky Seven all met each other at Alcoholics Anonymous, where they formed an unbreakable bond of friendship and camaraderie for some reason or another another, which led them to the events of the game, celebrating Ellen's birthday in a resort out on a nowhere planet owned by her father Krupnik, who also happens to own a massive vodka distillery. Oh god, the irony, it's killing me. Krupnik also runs a bartending show on the Darknet where he makes alcoholic beverages from corpses. As you might expect, he has an ulterior motive to host Ellen's party, as it's heavily implied that he plans to use Ellen and her friends as special ingredients on his show, willingly drinking alcohol made from your daughter's corpse. Well, if it works for Fulgers. As you might have noticed, the game's atmosphere is nothing short of depressing. Everything is dark and dingy. Everyone is drunk off dead people. Alcohol wants to eat their children and or is a furry. Playing it is like being locked in a suitcase with a straight jacket. Even walking in this game is so slow and tedious I'd rather take a nap in a garbage compactor. It'd be over quicker. Anyway, Moro fucks up the ship by flushing his phone down a toilet, but hey, at least we made it to Krupnik's planet, where we'll be walking to his resort. Down a straight line path for 15 fucking minutes. I wasn't exaggerating about the walk speed, and the alcoholic stepdad slap to the face is that the game actually lets us run here for 30 seconds at the end of the 15 minute walk, and we're never allowed to do it again. Oh my god! Look at this! Look! Look! I'm running! Oh my god! I'm actually moving quickly! Oh my god! I'm moving at a reasonable pace! Oh, Jesus Christ! Blah, blah, blah. We make it to the resort, celebrate Ellen's birthday party. Then, slowly but surely, the gang get wise to Krepnik's plans. And then it becomes a fight for survival. So how does the gang figure it out, you might be wondering? Well, this dude finds out because Krupnik has a presentation of his evil plans on repeat in his office. And this bitch finds out because Krupnik left a VHS tape with his plans just chilling in her room. Oh, and this bird bitch. He finds out because his friend is gutted and eaten by Krupnik in front of his eyes. At least that one's, uh, organic. <laughs> <laughs> Be serious, you said his plan was to turn him into alcohol on his stupid show or whatever. Now he just wants to straight eat him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns out Krupnik doesn't give half a shit about turning the crew into alcohol, which makes this entire cooking show segment entirely pointless. Sure, I guess. Let's throw out the only thematically impactful idea our game had. You know, alcohol. A substance that destroys lives, being made from lifeless bodies, and instead replace it with straight vanilla cannibalism. <laughs> It'll make our story so much more interesting. The rest of the game is spent trying to escape from Krupnik's grasp, which shouldn't be all that hard considering the total playable space we have to work with from here on out consists of two hallways and a handful of rooms. How exciting. Before I do you the common courtesy of spoiling this game's ending, now seems like a good time to talk puzzle design. After all, puzzles are like white blood cells. Without good ones, the shitty story would make the game go septic. Let's imagine ourselves a little puzzle here, shall we? You're faced with an electrical pen. Panel. And let's say you need to get a screwdriver to, I don't know, jimmy the cover off of it or something. In a good adventure game, the process of getting the screwdriver would constitute most of the puzzle, because that's generally how puzzles work. You need a screwdriver, but the only person who has one is busy using it and won't lend it to you. So maybe you need to distract him somehow by 
prank calling him or dumping acid on his head. I don't know. The point is that you need to engage in some critical thinking to get what you need to progress. It wouldn't be much of a puzzle to have the screwdriver sitting on a counter in the next room over. Thing is, Unlucky7 has no problem putting the screwdriver on that table in the next room over, and even less of a problem letting you know exactly where it is the second you walk into the room. And even less, less of a problem making you walk your slow furry ass over there to pick it up. Even though at this point in the puzzle's design, it might as well have been on the floor too fucking feet below the panel I need to use it on. Before naming your company Puzzling Dream, learn how to make your puzzles not a fucking nightmare. As it stands, it's hard to imagine a scenario where they could be more worse. More worse? Worser? Worcestershire sauce? <laughs> Back to the ending. Did I say ending? I meant cliffhanger. The game's been in early access for over a year and so far has only had one self-proclaimed major update, which only fixed a couple bugs. So the game is literally unfinished, ending with a to-be-continued that has no hope of ever coming to fruition. Seems puzzling dreams suppose that a plot twist on the last scene of the game substituted a real ending. Because as it turns out, one of the unlucky seven is working for Krupnik. And it isn't who you you think it is. It's Vinny. This guy. The one I teased earlier about being scared of elevators. Yeah, him. He's Krupnik's son, I guess. How exactly Ellen, Krupnik's daughter, not only was unaware that her father planned to kill and eat her, but also that one of her pals, Vinny, is actually her brother boggles my mind. It's especially disconcerting when you consider that Vinny had the hots for Ellen at the beginning of the game, i.e. he wanted to bone her bunny ass. <laughs> This is just... This is wrong. I mean... Jesus. Long story short, all but three of the boys die horribly, with the remaining few failing to escape the planet in their ship, resulting in them crashing into the forest to be hunted by Krupnik for the rest of eternity or some shit. I'm not gonna go any deeper on the story, but trust me, I could. This whole Vinny's in on it twist makes no fucking sense, but I doubt you give a shit how. And trust me, I left out a lot. For instance, there's an entire subplot regarding the ethics of robot slavery that kept showing its head every few hours, the culmination of which resulted in Cream Pie the Robot freeing this dumbass robot receptionist and running into the forest with him to huff gasoline or some shit. In less words, it has nothing to do with anything and bloats the script of a four-hour game. I could dissect every individual thing this game royally fucks up, but no matter how much I love dunking on furries, it just isn't worth it. And it sure as fuck isn't worth 11 bucks. I spent 250 on it and I still got ripped off. The characters suck shit, barely half the dialogue would make it past a sophomore English teacher's desk unscathed, and it's just generally depressing, like being Polish. There's so much wrong, in fact, that it was genuinely impossible to relate every major issue I had without my script's word count getting into the tens of thousands, although I doubt you'd need all that information to conclude this is one of the worst games ever made. Certainly the worst game I've ever played, and I've played Sonic Riders, so I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I leave you with my personal highlight of the game, where two of the voice actors read each other's lines by accident, with that take somehow making it into the final game. Like, comment, subscribe, fuck this game, fuck you, I'm out. I was, uh, I was just kidding when I said, fuck you. Uh, peace out, gamers? I believe you. You drank vodka with the blue bolettos. I am in a too great shock to react. Ha! <laughs> ha! Oh my god! Wait! <laughs> Wait a minute. He read his line. <laughs> he read his line! That was his line! That was Vinny's line! We need to get out of here. Or he's waiting for us. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the lines are all backward. They like fucked it up so bad they fucked up this whole take.